Hello everybody, Jet here, and welcome back to another Let's Talk Total War Three Kingdoms, where today we are going to be talking about the Blanzi for Sunjian. Uh, or Sunjian. Uh, to pronounce it, or to attempt to pronounce it correctly, guys. Uh, as you may notice, I have less hair. I have also taken on some feedback, uh, and we do have some background music now, guys. So, again, this is a new form, very new format for me. I will try and do proper videos long run. But for now, this is how I'm going to be doing these until I can do that. I have time to do that properly. So please feel free to give feedback to try and keep it constructive. Anyway, straight in here, guys. I'm not going to be going too much into detail for Sun, for Sun Jian, um, Jian. Because we've already done it in his blog post. I, that will be linked down in the comments and the description if you do want to look at them. So let's go first of all look at his abilities. So he is the Tiger of Jian Diong. Claiming ancestry with renowned military strategist Sun Tzu, the fearless Sun Jian has war flowing through his veins. So he's a powerful military leader. Um, oh, to start with as well, he is a sentinel, so that means he's a very defensive type character. You can sit and hold line. What you'd think of for a sentinel, his job is to hold a solid line. His abilities then? Flames of a Phoenix, a devastating swing with the power of the Risen Inferno. So a big AoE attack from the sounds of it. Tenacity of Steel, the longer the warrior fights, the stronger they become. So the longer he's in a fight, the more powerful he's going to get, which actually works very nicely with a Sentinel. Um, because obviously he's going to have that ability to sit there in a fight. He's got the staying power to stay in the fight. And the longer he's in that fight, the tougher he's going to the, well, the more damage he's going to do, the more strength he's going to have in that fight. Um, and finally, impetuous charge. A reckless charge, inspiring but exhausting. So a powerful charge which will inspire everybody around him, I think from sounds of it, but will exhaust himself. So he's going to be uh, weakened by that, but then the longer he survives, the uh, you know, more powerful bit. Now, considering his aggressive playstyle, I'm a bit surprised he's a sentinel. I was expecting him to be a vanguard or potentially even a um, champion. So vanguard are the more you know, forward damage dealers get into the groups of enemies, batter them, spread them around, and champions are your hero killers, basically. Um, anyway, uh, so meet Sun Jian. Uh, he's said to be descended from legendary Sun Tzu, known for his courageousness and resourcefulness and thrill seeking nature. He cuts a powerful figure as the head of the Sun family. So, next one, we're going to go on to some of his family here. And this is the thing with the son, with the son family, you do, all, and his granzi, is a lot of them are related to him. So it's going to be a very tight-knit community where you know everybody from early on, which is going to provide some benefits, certainly early game, against people like Cao Cao uh, and Liu Bei, who are going to potentially get access to spies and things earlier in the game. Because they've got that more diplomatic tree and they're probably going to go more down that route. Because you know who everybody is, it'll be much safer. Anyway, we'll talk more about that at the end. So she's a vanguard, as we just discussed. That's somebody who is very forward. So, you know, her job is to get into the enemy, batter, disrupt units. And she's a, a very forward, aggressive character. Uh, meant to go forward and disrupt enemy units and get into the fight unlike her father who is a sentinel so he's meant to hold a line with his troops uh, though he does have obviously that charge as well um, so Sun uh, Sunren I couldn't find the pronunciation for this so I do so please correct me and let me know how I should be pronouncing her as with everything because I'm probably butchering all the names daughter of warlord Sun Jian uh, and younger sister of uh, Sun Sen and Sun and uh, Sun Xiao. I know it looks like Kuo and Sei, and I'm trying to pronounce it with the proper ways. I may bounce between a bit uh, because I do find it quite hard to pronounce them. Uh, fiercely determined and eager to prove herself on the battlefield, like her brothers, and skilled with the blade and bow, Lady Sun is a force to be reckoned with. So, well, she has a bow as well. Um, so, Rising Sun is her first ability, which you can see down at the bottom there. Um, so, as surely as the sun rises, the lady will always endeavour to get her way. So, it's not really an ability, it's just something about her character. So, she's very going to be very driven in what she wants. If she wants something, she's going to want it, which is potentially going to cause some satisfaction issues. 
potentially, especially after her father dies, because if she wants to be the Lord, she's going to be dissatisfied if she's not. If she wants something, you know, without satisfaction mechanic, she's going to want it. Obviously, of course, if Sun, if Sun Jian falls, she may end up in somebody else's family. So, you know, with somebody else. So that could, again, play a part with them, as we have seen, because characters are persistent. Um, so it's going to provide that sort of thing. Um, Hard Seeker, a single shot. With a single shot, Lady Sun brings death. So, powerful ranged attack from the sounds of it. So, she's going to be able to shoot a single arrow, which will do a lot of damage. Sounds like an anti hero ability. So, it's something she'd use because against a group, a single shot, I would think, isn't going to be good. But we'll see how it works. Um, nature's ally, those in touch with the earth, find sure of footing and forests that provide uh, paths for them. So, I don't know if that's a compa campaign or battle ability. I think we did see something to do with it in the battle we saw with her. And I, I, I've not watched that recently, so I can't really remember what it was. But, so she's either going to get a buff, buffs, or her and her army are going to get a speed buffs through forests. Or she's going to be able to travel through forests slightly faster on the campaign map. Or maybe a combination of two. Well, again, we'll have to see. Um, kind of fits the character and the, the play, faction's play style. Of being very aggressive, wanting to be in enemy territory, wanting to be pushing constantly. Because they get buffs in enemy territory, I believe. And Flames of the Phoenix. We've seen this one before. This is a devastating swing with the power of the Risen Inferno. Uh, so a big AoE attack, uh, which will damage units, which fits a vanguard. So she'll charge in, use the ability, and do a big attack and damage the unit. Okay, so next, Sun... Oh, let's move it on. Sun Quan, or Sun... Sun Chen, or Chen, uh, to get it how it's meant to be pronounced, I believe, and he is a commander. So we've got a nice mix already here. Now, commanders provide buffs to everybody on the battlefield. They are reasonable in a fight, but they're not designed to, you know, they're not like the vanguards, the sentinels, the champions, who are the really aggressive play styles. He's more, uh, he can fight if he needs to, but he'll probably want to sit back and not get so involved. Certainly doesn't want to be getting involved in duels if he can help it. Um, the second son of Warlord, uh, Sun Jian, the, and younger brother of, of Sun Tsua, or Sun Se, uh, the first emperor of Eastern Wu. Sun Quan is a patient, confident, and diligent ruler, and he takes calculated risks to protect sons the son family's future so his abilities he's emerald eyed administrator striking looks and a sturdy frame betokens sun uh sun sends uh frame uh sun there uh, striking looks and sturdy frame betokens sun sends great nobility heroism and longevity so i don't know what any of that really tells us He's obviously noble, a hero, and lives for a long time. Um, but it also, e Emerald-Eyed Administrator, I assume it's also going to give him some sort of administrating bonus, but it doesn't really give us much to go on there. So let's look at his actual abilities. Stone Bulwark. Um, so, sorry, you can tell I'm looking down. The reason I'm looking to the camera is because I'm reading off my screen. Uh, with the... Uh, with the skin of the earth, arrows rebound harmlessly. So it sounds like he's got a good buff versus range shots. Nature's ally again, so we've already seen that one. So we're not sure what it does, but we think it might buff in certain types of terrain. An unyielding earth. So another earth one here. Nature itself provides a shield for its warriors. So some sort of defensive buff, whether it's on a cooldown or something he constantly has. We'll see. Uh... And to the next one, we're going off family here, just somebody who was within their Guanzi, who is loyal to them. Uh, it's Gan Ning, who is another vanguard, so another forward fighter, gets involved against the enemy. Um, he is a military officer, loyal to the Kingdom of Wu, fighting in numerous battles for the Sun family. He's a wild, impatient, and fearless. During his youth, he led a pirate group, Infamous, in, that infamously wore bells to warn their enemies of their impending doom. Mm, sounds uh, vicious. So his abilities then: wildfire, gangning moves moves even faster, much as fire spreads throughout the forest. So sounds like he moves fast, or he's got an ability to make him move fast. Roar of the beast. 
The fury of the victorious warrior is fearful to behold. Now, I do know a bit more about Vash because we've seen it in a few Let's Plays. Uh, basically, this one is a big morale debuff to those around them. It looked very, very powerful in the Let's Play, so it may get nerfed because people were literally breaking armies with it. It was that powerful. I think it was a minus 100 morale. Obviously, we don't know the overall figures, but it sounds big anyway. Um, and people were saying it was very powerful ability. Certainly early game, but early game, you're also fighting mostly militias and peasants. So, uh, hail of arrows, a flurry of shafts, but slow is the enemy advance. I think that probably does what it says on, on the tin. It's, it shoots a load of arrows, does a load of damage, slows the enemy. And Marshal G and Mini Halbert. Landing's uh, distinctive dual weapon leave none in doubt of his ability. It does sound like a weird combination of Mini Halbert and a, a G. Uh, so it does sound like an odd combination there. But again, we'll have to see how that works in game. And it's, you know, in really interesting everybody can use different weapons depending on their class and their specialization and they all provide different positives and negatives so some make you easier to hit but mean you're more likely to hit so they really do play an impact which is really cool so next Sun Tzu, uh or Sun Se um, I'll probably say Sun Se because the actual pronunciation I find really hard here guys Again, another Vanguard, so another very forward, very aggressive character. Now, the Sun, the Sun Guanzi, the Sun Dynasty do seem to have a very, very aggressive setup, which is quite good for their initial, and doesn't surprise me with their initial setup. But a lot of these characters are young at the start, so they're not necessarily going to be heroes playable right from the start, because obviously these are Sun Jian's children. Um, so, the eldest child of, of a warlord, Sun Jian. And brother of Sun Sun Quan and Sun Ren, although relatively young, he has proven himself a fearless warrior, talented commander, and ambitious general, famed for his military vi victories in Jiangdong, and that laid the foundation for the Kingdom of Wu. He's very much earned the nickname the Little Conqueror. So he's the Little Conqueror, uh, Sun Se, Sun Si, uh, has been likened to the warrior kings of old with aptitude with aptitude for military leadership that belies his youth. Again, he's got flames of the, found, of the phoenix, so a big AoE attack. Blood fury, Sunsei's strength, Sunsei's strength rises, his, as his strength rises, his grip on rationality weakens. Mm. So as he becomes more powerful, that doesn't sound like an ability, that sounds weird, so I'm not quite sure. Oh, a devastating roar. Uh, a roar of fury that crushes enemy roar. Oh, so maybe I've got devastating roar and um, and a roar of the beast confused. Maybe devastating roar is the morale drop and roar of the beast is something different which provides a buff, as we can see on Gan Ning. Uh, but it does say fearful, so maybe they're both similar things with different names. Sounds like another uh, one, anyway. And our final part of the uh, son of Sun Jian's Guanzi is Zhao Yu. Uh, so he is a strategist. So he's not going to be good on the battlefield. He is not somebody you really want to be getting into battles. If you can help it, if he's in a battle, you want to be holding back. Strategists are your campaign generals. So he is somebody you want to be uh, sitting back. Uh, fighting the, you know, fighting the, fighting the war, not the battle, uh, because they have bonuses on the campaign map rather than the battle map. So, uh, Zhou Yu uh, was finest strategist, loyal officer of the Sun family, and close friend of both the Sun Si and Sun Quan, calm and intelligent. Zhou Yu is a wise military tactician who sees through his enemy employees. So, he's a melo melodic strategist. If there is a mistake in the tune, and that's why I meant melo melodic. I was a bit confused by that. There's a mistake in the tune, tune. Zhu Yu will look up. So he notices if something's wrong. So we'll have to see how that goes in game, but it sounds like he's a very good at spotting enemy tricks. Ripples of, percep of perceptive. 
odd wording, in tune with nature. Zuyu sees all, so maybe gives him more able to pick up enemies easier, see further, or pick hidden units up. Again, I don't know if people can hide or use, try and sneak. Um, inspiring surge, inspirational deeds, spur forces to faster action. Uh, so, sounds like maybe a campaign movement buff, or maybe people in the territory can move fast, or maybe if he's in the army. Again, we'll have to see more. And the wisdom of the river. Knowledge of the enemy weakens their defences against you. So sounds like he's got ways of reducing the enemy's defences. Make them easier for us to for you to attack. Um, so anyway, not too much there. They don't have they're, they're probably far more important abilities than any of these other ones we've seen from the more aggressive battle type characters. But this is where it's all really interesting, because they sound less interesting, but the campaign it really does look like the campaign is very, very good. Uh, sorry, very, very important in the way that Three Kingdoms is going to play. Now, the Sun, the Sun Guanzi, the Sun family, does look very interesting, because you've got a few buffs. As mentioned earlier, because we've got so many family members in Sun Ren, Sun Suan, and uh, Sun Sue. Or some say, uh, and we've got our two very loyal friends, Guan Ning and Zhu Yu. Uh, it looks like you're going to have quite a lot of good, strong, friendly characters early on, which means potentially you're going to be protected, certainly early game, from um, a lot of the intrigues, the spying, because you're going to have far less need to take external people on into your faction. Um, it looks like a very aggressive faction, which does kind of fit what we would expect, you know. You've got mostly vanguards with Sentinel, um, only one commander and one strategist in there. Uh, so, a very aggressive playstyle, which again, from the blog, uh, which is linked in the comments, that makes a lot of sense to me because... Well, because he is meant to be, you know, he has a very aggressive playstyle from the sounds of it. Uh, so they will benefit you in that, but it does potentially mean you're going to be a little unbalanced. You're going to be a very aggressive faction, um, which isn't necessarily always good, because when you know we need to not be aggressive, it could cause you some issues. But again, we'll have to see how that all plays out, guys. Um, all in all, though, it sounds like a very interesting roster of characters. It sounds like a very interesting uh, play st char you know, group of characters to play. Um... And a very close, tight-knit, which is, as mentioned, going... To, I'm going to stop mentioning, but it sounds like it's going to help a lot early on. Let me know what you think, guys. Um, and please, as said, give me feedback on this format. Um, I have improved it by adding music. Hopefully, the, the, the level of that is right. I will give it a quick listen before I drop it, just in case it's terrible. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for your time. And please feel free to pop comments in the comments section or drop over to my Discord and say hi. There's a link to my Discord in the comments and the description as well as links to my Twitter, my Patreon and my affiliations. If you have enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.